Hi everyone, this is Larry, Jeep and Mo, and today we're going to go through a scenario. You're out on the trail wheeling, and you break the case, whether it be your, an oil pan, if it's not stamped steel, transfer case, or something like that. What happens? Can it be fixed? Is it a total loss? You know, how, how do you salvage it? Whether you take it off and send it out and they fix it for you, or if you have the tools in-house, you know, maybe you can do it there as well. But if you have some of the older Jeeps or some of the other older uh, vehicles, you may not have the option of just going down and picking up a new one at the auto parts store. Some of this stuff has to be fixed, right? So let me show you the process and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so we're gonna demonstrate on this old oil pan. Got it out of the junkyard just for this purpose. You know, the scenario, we hit something, knocked a hole through it it could just as easily be a transfer case or something else they're they're cast aluminum as well all right so how do we fix it well let's go through the steps first thing we're going to get everything cleaned up it's hard to see but there's a bunch of cracks we got to take care of the cracks we got to clean the back side of it as well and then uh, there's going to be some welding involved now if you don't have the means to weld it then you can send it out all right, so let's go through it. You may not be able to see the cracks up front, but the minute you hit it with a sanding disc, you can see where all the cracks are at. So we got to take care of those as well. All right, so let's get this thing cleaned up. I'm just using these little roll lock sanding pads. One's a flat wheel that I just dropped. The other ones are just scotch bright. Okay. So we've got that piece somewhat flush. Lighting may not be the greatest. But we got it back flush. Okay, so I'm just going to use a rotary burr and a Dremel to uh, go through and clean out these cracks. Okay, so we've kind of identified where the cracks are at. So I'm going to go in here, right there towards the end. I have to get this in a little sturdier place. And I'm going to drill a hole at the end of all these cracks to get the cracks from quit running. I'm going to radius these all out real good. So I'll work these corners out here and uh, we should be good. Okay, I haven't done the show on a new table yet. Those of you guys who follow the channel know we had an ESAB machine for a while and it broke. We sent the ESAB back and got this Miller 220 and very happy with it. I'll do a full review on that later. But for now, let's, let's get this fixed. I'm just using acetone. And I'm sure there's, in, there's some crap in this. I've sampled a few small pot spots on this. And, well, it's full of garbage. Now I'm just going to use some 40-43 filler rod. So if you guys have any kinds of questions or anything, I would love 
up some Q and A. If you want to put those in the questions below, I'll try to either answer them, answer them online, or reply back, or you know, depending on how many questions we get. Okay, so we're going to heat this thing up a little bit. So there, it's about 200 degrees. Okay, so we're just slowly going around and, and this butter and it's popping it. There's a lot of crap in this. So I'm just going to slowly go around and fill it up. Let off periodically just to let it cool off, but it really is full of garbage. Okay, so while cleaning this up, I found another crack that ran up, probably because of the heat, expanded. Let's drill another hole, we gotta fill that. Then he's filling that, clean up the backside. Probably take a little filler in there as well. So there's a lot of glare. Cleaned up the other side, a lot of sink on this side. It's just welding like your garbage. So I gotta try to fill this in, then we'll get it all sanded off. Okay, now let's uh, go with the flap wheel and clean it up. See what we have. Okay, so we got it filled, right? There's a couple sinks in it. Got it filled from both sides. Is it perfect? By all means, no. You know, if, I would say if uh, you're, you've been welding for 20 or 30 years, you probably make this thing look three times better. You can also find arc rods that you could have done this with instead of a TIG welder, right? So you know, don't be afraid to tackle a few things in your garage here and there. You can buy a AC welder fairly inexpensively. All right, so that was welding up that old, that old nasty oil pan that had ton of porosity and ton of oxide coming out of it. We were fighting it all the way. Was it a perfect weld up? Absolutely not. Probably would have made more sense to go ahead and just weld a patch over it, weld up from the front and back and call it a day. But we just opted to fill it just to show that. So if you had busted off an ear off of a transfer case or another kind of mount, even if it was steel, you could go back, fill it, reattach it. You could always replace if you can find the parts which is always the limiting factor and on time frames so if you can't weld it in in-house you know there's always welders around town if it's steel it's much easier you could always use arc welder and they make arc for aluminum as well you don't have to use a an ac tig setup so this kind of stuff we're going to bring to the channel so it's not just trails and stuff like that we're going to try putting some fa some fab work in there like to know what kind of fab work you guys would like to see. 
You know, we've got some roof racks and a system that goes in the back of a Jeep that can be expanded upon and even some uh, suspension stuff we plan on building. If you enjoy this channel, check out some of the other videos that pop up here. Check out those. And until then, we'll see you at the next adventure. This is Larry, Jeep and Mo.